Greetings. Hey there, hey there. Greetings to you. Greetings to you. How are you, Natalia? I'm doing so good today. How are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. You know, today's been awesome so far. So far, it's been nice. You know, I can't complain. We got a nice walk in, we got some nice meditation, and just getting myself ready for our conversation. You yeah. know? <laughs> Me too. How lovely. That's a great way to end the day. Yeah. Yeah. How was your, I know you spent some time with your mother yesterday, yes. right? Yes, absolutely. How was your time together? Beautiful. You know, I love putting a smile on her face and being able to spend any kind of time with her to show her that I love her. And there was this uh, uh, gentleman show that was going on by the beach, like a Chippendales type show that I know that she would just absolutely love. So I took her and she had a blast. It was so much fun. Okay. okay, so that's how you put a smile on her Absolutely. face. Absolutely, a, a big smile. <laughs> she was all night. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, the festivities, the festivities. And, you know, it's interesting because, um, and does anyone call you Natalie for short or just Natalia? People call me Nat, Nat Natalia, or Natalie, okay. either one. Okay, Natalie. So, you know, if anybody didn't know you because i know in your bio it says you know you're an artist you're an open-minded leo mm -hmm. but how would you describe yourself natalie i i would describe myself as a very optimistic positive person and a loving person i love to meet people i love to start conversations with people and i love to know about people's journeys i think it's so amazing. human connection you know Absolutely. So when you said optimistic, like, has optimism really played a role in your in your journey? Like just being optimistic overall? Or what do you mean when you say optimistic? Absolutely. I feel like my entire life, I've always done my best to see the brighter side of things. And I think it's so healthy for your mental health. Mm -hmm. I think so easy to get caught up in negativity and negative thoughts and judgment and just so much that we kind of deal with on the day to day and optimism really helps me combat those thoughts and keep pushing and stand by what is true to me and to keep just the light in everything I like to keep the lightness in things the the positive of everything yeah the silver lining, I guess you could say in, in, in all situations yeah yeah very light-hearted mm -hmm. you know, very light-hearted i know that i forget what culture it is where they talk about you know in our last days where they put on a scale you know they put your heart and they put a feather on a mm -hmm. scale and they want your heart to be light as a feather mm -hmm. right? have you heard of that i have have it okay but it's like some people, that's their ambition. Like that's their goal in life, just to have their heart be as light as a feather, you know, to have the be light. And I, I feel that energy coming from you. Yeah. I do my yeah. best, you know, I know it's, it's not easy nowadays. So being in a world where I see that not a lot of people uh, have that ability to always see that brighter side of things, sometimes it's harder for than others, I try my best to be that one to kind of be that reminder of like, hey, you know, I, I get the situations happening, you know, but all things are temporary. And you know, there's gonna be when we have our dark days, there's always that rainbow, you know, that comes afterwards. So right. absolutely love being that reminder of that. Absolutely. And thank you for the reminder of the rainbow, too, because we wouldn't have the rainbow without rain. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Something to look forward to when it's raining, right? Mm -hmm. that rainbow that's coming up after. Yeah, yeah. One of my friends said, "No, no flowers or no rain, no joy without pain. No fl mm -hmm. flowers without rain." Yeah, that's what they said. No flowers you know. without rain, no joy without pain. Wow. Like, like so, the contrast, you know, mm -hmm. it's interesting. And right now, it's actually raining right here where I am in Texas. So that's interesting. You know, maybe there will be a rainbow afterwards. I hope yeah. so. And if there is, you'll have to show me. <laughs> I'll take a I'll take a look out there and see. 
you we have someone just now that was speaking love into you or they were just speaking light on you just now natalie oh. and i don't know if you know them do you know uh daniel i do that's one of my best friends okay so daniel just said the brightest light and purest soul to walk the earth do you do you receive that i receive that i receive that thank you daniel he's just too sweet why do you think daniel is saying those words like what do you have like a lot of history together you said that's your best friend or what are your yes. best yes yes i know him from high school a couple years back now um and just one of the people that just stuck by me, you know, and I guess sees my light and, and loves me for who I am. And I love them for who they are. And it's just been so beautiful to watch each other grow. You know, I think it's so cool to get to know people and connect and see where life takes them. And he's been really supportive of me and I love supporting him. And I'm so blessed. And thank you so much, Daniel, for your sweet words. You're so sweet. <laughs> That's awesome to have that support around you you know to have friends like people like daniel to have loved ones to have kindred spirits as they call it you know they they do say and i'm sure you've already heard this natalie like your vibe attracts your yes. tribe yes. You know? so we we keep it alive so we can thrive but mm -hmm. that that high vibe attracts the tribe mm -hmm. so when you say that you know he's been very supportive of you you know over the years or over your journey since high school what, what were the times when you needed that support the most? Like, in what ways do you feel like you've needed to receive that support? I feel like for, for a big um, there we go. A big chunk of my life, I wasn't in the healthiest of relationships, and he was a very awesome, beautiful, helpful companion in reminding me of my worth reminding me of um, the beauty that I hold within myself and my capability. And um, also in my spiritual journey, through knowing Daniel, I started to embark on spirituality and he also was interested in spirituality. So he was really an amazing companion and friend to talk to, just diving into all of this and being able to like explore like tarot cards together and crystals and meditations. So Daniel's been such a solid rock for me. Um, one of the few people actually that was into spirituality when I started to embark on that journey. So I'm super grateful for him. Beautiful, awesome, awesome. So, you know, when it comes to like, you know, you said tarot, you said crystals and meditation, were those the three things that started the vibration when it came to your deep dive into spirituality? Like, how did your spirituality journey embark? How do you feel like you embarked on it? Yeah. Really, I think it started with um, me. I was diagnosed at a young age at 10 with um, ADHD and diabetes type 2. Oh, wow. OK, wow. Growing up, I mean, I things I felt like I didn't want to be different from everybody else I thought at such a young age I wanted to be like everybody else I want to eat like everybody else you know I don't want to have uh, my teacher beside me and have extra time for my homework and tests because I didn't want to be looked at as different so I didn't take the opportunities that were given to me and I kind of just played along like I was everybody else and thought the same way as everybody else. And later on in life, like in high school, I started really taking a toll on my health, especially diabetes. Mm -hmm. Since I didn't want to act like I was like everybody else, I didn't take the necessary precautions to take care of myself. So I didn't diet, I didn't exercise, I didn't take any of the medications that were recommended to me. Mm -hmm. So later on, life after high school i started to take a real toll on my body energetically physically um it got to a point where um all the things that were happening in my life um were leading up to this point where i just felt so energetically depleted mm. and i started to wonder at some point like is this all that my life is gonna be and a lot of it had to do with food and my relationship with food what? i realized that I had such a really unhealthy relationship with food. So I got in a habit of eating big meals, eating 
meals and uh, eating un unhealthy things to the point where I would catch the itis every single time I ate mm -hmm. and kind of be just sprawled out on the couch. Like, you know, is this all that my life is going to be is, you know, work and then eat and then sleep. And mm -hmm. um, one day I ended up taking uh, magic mushrooms mm -hmm. and that led me into this experience where I felt like I was in a space of love. It felt like I had reconnected with God and God was holding me and telling me that everything was going to be okay. And that there were some um, like trials and tribulations that I had experienced growing up with my parents uh, and you know um, some sorts of forms of abuse and god was telling me that i had to forgive that you know my parents were only doing the best with what they knew at that time and that, that really resonated with me i think i was holding on to so much like resentment and so much pain and so much and so many bad habits that just weren't serving me and in that moment i felt like everything was all right I didn't have to hold on to these things anymore. And I didn't realize how greatly they were affecting me. So after that experience that had was like the catalyst to my spiritual journey. And I started um, diving into holistic healings mm -hmm. and um, different kinds of medicines that are available to us for healing. And now I'm just all about healing. I think that it's so beneficial for us not only spiritually but just physically and energetically ever since i've been embarking on this spiritual journey i now have so much more energy i don't feel that way anymore and it's it's uh really crazy to be on the other side of how i used to feel um because i just never thought that i would be in this place yeah. and i know that there are so many other people out there that uh struggle especially with diabetes um, and I feel like, uh, with holistic healing, there are so many other modalities that we can take to heal ourselves from these ailments without having to go like a pharmaceutical route. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Natalie. Wow. What a transformation, you know, like what a journey, what just, you know, you just, oh my goodness. You know, thank you for sharing that. Like, thank you. Just for opening up and just, you know, sharing your story and like how things started and how they transitioned, you know, that, that you listened, you, and now you're glistening, you know, and you're glowing, you know, it's flowing, you, you're growing. So this is amazing. You know, when you're talking about type two diabetes for anyone who's never struggled with or dealt with diabetes, especially type two diabetes, what would you say are some of the things that it didn't allow you to do? Like, what were some of the things that many other people could do that you could not do? For one, one just um, the eating, you know, being uh, as a diabetic, you have to portion your meals um, and you have to be conscious of what you're putting in your body because we need to be uh, aware of sugar and carbohydrates, carbs turn into sugar. So being mindful of those little things you know going to the park with your friends and we want to get some ice cream and i have to think twice about the ice cream or if i even want ice cream because my sugar levels could be too high and if they're too high i feel really sluggish i feel like a little gloop a little blob of goop and i feel like i can't move my body the way i want to move my body energetically i don't have the energy to do the things that i want to do so it feels like um, really complacent. It feels like you want to do so much, but just the energy just isn't there for you. Right. Um, and that's only because I wasn't taking care of it the way I needed to. You can always do diet and exercise and get out and really portion yourself. And that can change your life around as well. But right. at that time, I just exercise just wasn't my thing <laughs> and just wanting to be a kid and just wanting to be like everybody else and and eat whatever was the main thing on my mental. So yeah. that was the main way that it was affecting me is just going out and being in social settings and and um, 
having to really limit and watch my consumption. Mm -hmm. So there was always that feeling of limitation. Yeah. Like, if I eat too much, if I eat, if I go to Korean barbecue with everybody else, it might cost me the most because I might wake up the next day or most likely will wake up the next day completely dehydrated. Um, when your sugar's high, it just feels like uncomfortable within your body. Your body's working extra hard now to fight and, you know, uh, process the sugar. So it's, uh, it just feels like it just takes up so much of my energy. Yeah, yeah. One of my friends, you know, and I don't know if you'll resonate with this, Natalie, but they said, you know, with sugar, they, they felt like it was creating, and they even had a vision about this, but they had a vision that sugars and artificial things like, like sugars were creating almost like black holes inside of our cells. Like if you can imagine our cells, and it was like they said that it was creating black holes in our cells that kind of, you know, suck out or siphon our life force. That's what she said. These were her words. They were like black holes that are siphoning our life force from the sugar. I had never heard anybody call sugar in that way, you know? Yeah. yeah. I really resonate with that. And that also reminds me of when your sugar is low. When my blood sugar is low, it feels like someone's got a syringe and has put it in my back and is sucking the life force out of me. Jesus. So it feels like I'm, I'm shaky. It feels like, it just feels like a, a crazy feeling, a really uncomfortable feeling. And you know what, Jerome, I have to thank you so much too, because you introduced me to pranic living, a pranic lifestyle. And yes, <laughs> I, when I heard that, you know, my, once I started getting into all of this, I started to really look at my relationship with food. And I realized that I created, um, I feel like I created a, a like a, a demon, I should say. I, maybe that's not the best word, but a demon myself. I created another version of me with all these bad habits of sugar cravings and things that I've been ingesting and consuming all up until this point that I decided to change my life. Right. So when I was introduced to pranic li lifestyle, um, I started realizing more about fasting and how it's actually so much more beneficial to the body than I could ever realize. And I used to be so frustrated with this cycle that I was in of, you know, eating, overeating and not feeling good and not having energy and then feeling bad for myself, but not really having the energy to make a change about it. And I used to just think, you know what, I'm going to just stop eating. I'm going to just stop eating food because food seems to be my biggest struggle right now and it's my biggest enemy and i can't seem to fight it but everyone around me would always say you know you have to eat you know you have to eat you you can't you know skip your three meals a day and i was just thinking you know well, my body and the way that it's working i don't know if it's serving me sometimes i'm not hungry but i created this habit of you know it's a certain time of the day right now and i typically eat so i should eat even if I'm not hungry, I should just eat because it's what I'm used to. I created this other version of myself that's used to this lifestyle that I don't want to be a part of anymore. So I started fasting. I started practicing three-day fasting with liquids. Mm. And I have changed my life around, Jerome. I have so much more energy. I have so much more, just a whole different outlook towards life now that I realize I don't have to spend so much energy digesting food when sometimes my body needs a break and it's so healthy to at least fast once a week to give your whole digestive system and nervous system lymphatic system everything just a good rest yeah yeah but amazing I like our vehicles right and and i just been running mine on overdrive all the time and now my body i feel like is finally thanking me for you know, giving it a rest and, and listening to it. I feel like through all of this, I've created a stronger relationship with my body because now I can listen to what I actually need and what I actually want versus the cravings and the habits that I created. Mm. It's, it's really cool because I feel a lot more intuitive now with myself and what I'm consuming. Yeah, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. So like just an even stronger and bigger bond with your own body. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like we're in these vessels, but you know, to have a, a whole nother dynamic, to have another, a whole nother form of appreciation for just this body, this temple, just this vehicle that is allowing us to 
live and breathe to have this conversation right now to you know to be in other places you know to be in other spaces like it's just amazing it's amazing and that you embarked on that that is actually very brave and fearless of you to do because i'm gonna tell you natalie like what you just said even like three days even one day my family members i mean i have loved ones around me like family they don't even want to go half a day without giving their body a break like you said i was completely in that same wave that same cycle of working eating sleeping and working and eating and sleeping and working and eating and sleeping that i i never thought that i would break out of that but yeah they feel like the the three meals a day plus snacks in between and it's like it's it, there's a big fear there's a big fear of lessening that of lightening that and it feels like if they're lightening that they feel like they're tightening you know within that lightening within that lifting they feel it's restricting you know within that shifting so what do you feel was one of the most challenging things about you know taking that leap of faith and betting on your own body to make it through the break you know what what was the most challenging about that for you honestly jerome and this is a question i was going to ask you because i feel like the most challenging thing is the sacrifice that has to be made when you make this decision because now you can no longer relate or connect to people in the way that they you used to because sometimes some of our most favorite connections revolve around food you know what we do is we go and chit chat and we eat together you know um so to have to realize that i'm making this sacrifice for myself because i i love myself and i and i want to be here and i want to experience life to the fullest and changing my mindset around you know like how this is going to affect my relationships and how i'm going to be able to interact with people and connect with people so that's been the biggest thing but what i realized is you know uh the people that are really there for you and really care for you and support you will love you no matter what so i am so thankful to my friends that are like oh, okay you're fasting all right you know well let's do something else then and you know no judgment just all support and love and it's been amazing i thought it might i think the the thought you know the biggest thing that i'm realizing is the thought itself is actually harder than the action sometimes the thoughts can keep you complacent they can keep you in fear and the thoughts are really the hardest thing to get over because once you do it you're like well that wasn't that bad and i was over here thinking myself into a little ditch you know and i really didn't even need to do that it's just it's all a mental game and i feel like when you really put your mind to something and you put your whole all your intention and all your all your everything into it you know we are capable of so much right. so I'm so blessed to have have the support system around me that just support me and love me and just want to see me happy. And it's it really isn't as hard as I made it out to seem in my mind. Wow. You know. Yeah. Like, okay, we we're going to have a family event and, you know, what if a, a big celebration, we're going to go out to a fancy restaurant and you know, what do I do? Well, you know, the thought around it is actually heavier than actually just going and filling out how it's going to be. Maybe I can look at the menu and get a really nice, you know, refreshing drink. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, maybe I can have some fruit or maybe I can just enjoy everybody being in this space and communicate and just be present. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be the way that I'm always making it out to be in my head. Right. right. Thank you for that, because that is so key. You know, it's so crucial what you said, Natalie like the mind games mm -hmm. the aspect of it it's a lot more than we we give it credit it's so much of it is mental i mean it's draining for for a lot of us to even think about going without is that just that thought alone can be draining you mm -hmm. know on your energy if you've never done it before if your body has never you know if you've never even tried just doing something different and getting out of your comfort zone and into your Discovery zone, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it can be. Oh, it's just the biggest thing for me right now. Mm -hmm. There's growth in getting out of your comfort zone. Even if it's just the smallest thing to you, it's still a big step. Right. 
be any in any avenue and i started to explore that not only through fasting but just getting out there and being more out in the world and intermingling more with like-minded people and as you just said earlier you know you attract your your vibe attract your tribe so i feel like the more i've been raising my vibration the more i'm attracting more people like that that want to be around me and support me and it's just been a really beautiful domino effect absolutely it's the domino effect it's the ripple effect like it just keeps the butterfly effect it just keeps affecting all over yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, like when it, when the energy is directing, it's just it keeps on affecting. You know, it keeps on collecting. It keeps on collecting. So, well, I love what you said, Natalie, about you know the ones who are there and the ones that care. You know the ones that care and the ones that are there. So as you were becoming more aware and, you know, giving your body a break, experimenting with fasting, how was it with your family members? Like, like your mother, you know, how was it with your, your people that were right around you? Not necessarily friends, but family. Cause I know family, it can be tough sometimes because I mean, they've seen you all your life. They know, the versions of you that have come up like and they also have a version of you in their mind so was that was there ever a pushback with your mother or anybody else oh de definitely okay. uh, my mother actually she's one of my greatest inspirations because she is also diabetic and because of the trials and tribulations that she went through in her life um it has led her to a path where she just used alcohol as a crutch and it has led her to now have, she's at stage three kidney failure at about 45 years old. Mm -hmm. So, right. And she has diabetes like me, but you know, it's, 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 it's hard out here. You know, it is all a mental game. And a lot of us have gone through trauma and, and things that, you know, sometimes put us in boxes and we don't even realize we're in the box, you know, and through her journey, uh, it's inspired me to really take care of myself for myself, but you know, there you go, there you go, <laughs> for myself and and for her. Um, so recently, she actually had me go and uh, accompany her to one of her dialysis appointments. And in dialysis, she has to have her blood filtered through an artificial kidney because her kidneys no longer work. So all of her blood goes through this machine, it gets purified, and then it goes right back into her. And she wanted me to uh, accompany her because she wants me to really see, you know, the effects of not taking care of yourself, you know, not taking care of the diabetes. And she really does not want me to be in that position one day. Um, and I love her to death, you know, and I just want to be here for as long as she is here, you know. And it's funny to me because after I witnessed that whole dialysis appointment and was there for her and see that everything that she has to go through, she has to do this um, four days a week for five hours. So it takes a lot of her time. Right after this appointment, you know, we get in the car and I'm like, okay, can I take you home? And she's like, do you want to get some Jack in the Box? And I'm like, you know, I don't want Jack in in a box because Jack in a box is not going to serve me, you know, and I love her to death. And I love that I have a mother and I have a family, but it is sometimes difficult because sometimes, you know, we can't always relate. We can't always understand why the other person is doing what they're doing. And I'm trying to show her that I really want to take care of myself and just do better for me, for our family and not have to have this. Um, it seems like it might be, I'm not sure if it, it's genetic or not, but a lot of people in my family have diabetes. So I would like to be the one, at least in, with, in my life, to end that. So it's, it's a little difficult because just as much as, you know, I'm ex 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 explaining and showing to my family what I'm doing, you know, uh, I still have. So you don't want to drink, you know, you, alcohol, I've not been drinking either. It doesn't serve me. I've been five months sober. So I, but even though I'm on this journey and my family is well aware, sometimes I still get those comments here and there. And 
you know, it's, it's, it's a little difficult, but really, I realized that like, I, I'm an optimistic being. So I just don't let any of these things get to me, you know, like I, I feel like one day when I'm where I want to be, they'll understand and they'll then be like, ah, oh, you know, that's why she didn't want to eat with us. That's why she couldn't drink with us. And it'll all just fall into place. But for right now, I'm just so grateful that I have family, right. you know, whether they agree with me or whether they don't, I am so grateful for the family that I do have, that they're here, that they're present and that they love me, you know? So I can't be upset at the choices that they've made. I can only be grateful that they're here supporting me right now, even if they don't understand it. Right. That's gratitude, you know? I, I feel it because it's, you know, it's really a testament and it's powerful to just say, you know, I'm grateful for what I have, you know? I'm grateful that I have this family around me. I'm grateful I have a family at all to call my own, you know? and just to let that be known and to let that be shown with you because, you know, when you're talking about things that run in the family, there's a saying, you know, Natalie, that... Nat I am right here. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> she pulled the pulled Shaggy and Scooby. I, you ever seen Shaggy and Scooby? They pulled it. She was like... <laughs> she pulled it like... Oh, I Right, let me grab the charger. Whoop. <laughs> I was like, where did she go? Where did she go? Oh, she, she pulled a magic trick, a disappearing act. I love the Houdini. <laughs> the... So, yeah, you know, what you were saying, um, and I'll, I'll wait for you to get situated, you know. <laughs> yeah. But there's a saying, like, it ran in the family until it ran in the family. Yeah. There's a saying it ran in the family until it ran into me. There's a saying like it ran into the it ran in the family until it ran into me. Like breaking those those chains, breaking generational chains, generational curses, or generational things. Like when it comes to oh, it's it's it ran in the family, but mm -hmm. it stops right here with me. Right. It does no longer continue. Yeah. yeah, there's so much power to that, you know. Uh, I'm actually, I feel like a lot of us can take the circumstances that were given to us and see that as something that happened to us and use it to kind of, you know, be a victim sometimes. But I actually am grateful. I am actually so grateful and blessed that I have been given the opportunity to look within by being diagnosed with diabetes. Sometimes I think to myself, you know, what if I didn't have this, then I probably would not be making these changes. And I would probably be so unaware of how I'm treating my body and how much more energy I could really be, you know, using and, and all these beautiful things that trickle into the changes and, and decisions that I made because of having diabetes, you know, so I see it as like a superpower, like, wow, because I have this, now I get to take a look within myself. I get to really understand myself better and be more aware of, you know, the things that I'm consuming and what I'm putting into my body. And if I didn't have this, I probably wouldn't. And who knows where I would be, you know, I'm so blessed. I see it as a superpower. So it's allowed for reflection and redirection. Yes. Uh-huh. Like because I could easily be stuck in a, in, a, in a cycle that isn't serving me with alcohol and food and, and all these things. And I can continue, you know, the, these living in these, you know, uh, I guess you could say gener generational, you know, uh, I guess, I, would, I don't wanna say generational curses, but <laughs> you know, like just these habits that have been passed down and passed down and accepted. Mm -hmm. It can continue on, but it start, it stops with me. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love your ferocity. I love your tenacity, you know, and I love your, just your ability to, to really say that and to obey that within you, you know, to, to not only to see that, but to be willing to be that, you know, mm -hmm. so that you can be that, like, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then being that, you know, now I'm standing in my truth and what feels good to me, I can inspire others just by walking my path. 
I don't even know who, who I'm affecting, you know, and it's, and it's just beautiful. It's just that, that little trickle effect. And congrats on five months of sobriety. You know, you said five months over without alcohol. And I saw a post that you made on your story. It was also vape free. You said, yeah. you said not only alcohol, but vape. Mm -hmm. the, I've never, you know, known too much about vaping, mm -hmm. but say that it's even harder to break with the vape than, you know, certain other things. Like what was, what was hard about the vape when it came to, to letting that go? I think what's hard about it is being in denial that you're addicted to it. So, so it started with my, so my family members, my little cousins uh, brought it around and they would always hit it. And I was always like, no, you know, as a bigger cousin, I don't want you smoking that. I don't, you shouldn't do that. But then it started to be something that was just a lot more common. It seems like everybody's puffing on a vape. You go out to parties, people are vaping. And then I started to kind of, well, hmm, I want to know what that's about. So when they would bring it around me, I'm like, well, you know, let me try it. So instead of saying no, now I'm like, well, you know, let me, I, I want to hit it. I want to see what it's like. And it came to trying it every once in a while to now everyone that's around me has one. And now I'm always asking if I can hit it. And then next thing you know, I have my own. And it went from not liking it, to kind of using it, to now I have my own and now I'm smoking it like it's oxygen now every time yeah it just it, it just comes into this habit where you just it just turns into a habit you're driving and now you're used to picking something up and smoking so now whenever i'm on the road i'm picking it up and smoking i don't crave it i just be, made a habit out of it so then comes to a point where it's like well man am i addicted did i create an addiction am i addicted to this now it seems like i have this thing on my person at all times I'm always grabbing it. I'm always using it. And then it came to a point for me, um, I do a lot of physical activity for work. Going up the stairs, I'm huffing and puffing because my lungs are doing so much work because of this vape that I'm constantly puffing on. It was not serving me. So coming to the realization that I have created a bad habit for myself and now I'm in it is probably the hardest thing because I don't want to believe that that's something that a, a reality for my, myself. I don't want to be addicted to any substances, you know, but it kind of just creeps its way into being a habit into your life. And then here you are puffing it all the time, looking for it. If you don't have it, you're like, where is it at? You know? So that's probably been the hardest thing. Cause I didn't, I don't, I don't want to be, I like to say that I'm not addicted to anything. I don't have any addictive tendencies, but addiction is crazy. It could be food. It could be, social media it could be so many different things yeah. and uh, the vape ended up being one of them okay so thank you for your honesty you know and your transparency natalie because you know i haven't been in that world but i've witnessed it you know mm -hmm. i've seen several people where i remember not too long ago just towards the end of last year i was with my family in california and I walk everywhere, you know, I do these walks and talks and I do these, I read and I walk and I just constantly in movement. But sometimes I also take the, the city bus, the transportation. And when I was in Riverside, I remember I was near this high school and I seen these three kids like while I was waiting for the bus and they were just talking to each other, you know, two girls and one guy. And all three of them were hitting this vape, you know, they were all three of them were vaping and they were young, you know, they were like young kids they were kids and I'm seeing them you know hitting the vape and talking and vaping and talking and like they just started walking so when you said you know it became like like it was oxygen mm -hmm. you, what was the feeling that it gave you that you didn't have before like if you can just recall what was the the feeling or the sensation that you had with it that you didn't have without it I guess it gives you a rush of like um when i'm thinking about it now i feel like it gives you a little boost of being more present i guess you could say so i maybe i grew a habit of feeling like i wasn't always in the present moment and when i'm hitting this it kind of gives you like a little boost of energy a little like oomph, you know and then you can be a little bit more present but then it also has all these other 
like it doesn't taste very good you know now my you know my blood pressure might be a little high and now i'm huffing and puffing up these stairs too so it's to really think about it in a sense where we already have everything that we need you know we can live in a, any reality we want and any vibration we want to so to really rely on anything external outside of us for something that we can create within ourselves to me now sounds so silly, you know, because it was costing this little hit, this little boost of like an up for, you know, a couple of minutes out of every day that I'm hitting it could really be my whole lifestyle. You know, if I'm not so dependent on these external uh, sources, you know, because now I feel like I'm always, I don't need it anymore. And now I feel like I think about it and all I think about are the down effects because I'm already at this up effect. I'm already here. Mm -hmm. So now it's not even, now I'm like, oh, babe, like my heart is going to go up. I'm going to be huffing for, for breath. You know, it's just not a, a pleasant habit to be in. I see. I see. And it's interesting too, because as you were giving that description of you said it gives you a boost of being more present. So what first came to my mind, Natalie? You know what came to my mind when you said that? Mine. So this is an instrument that I use and I carry it around with me wherever I go. And it's a bamboo flute, right? So when I breathe into this flute, and this is like long, deep breaths, like deep breathing, and I'm just playing the flute, but it's like breathing, I'm breathing. Mm -hmm. It gives me such a boost of what you said. Like mm -hmm. I just shot, it's like it shoots me into the present moment and all is well, mm -hmm. but it's just breathing. It's just you breathing. Know? And that's such a healthy tool and a healthy habit too. Yeah. You know, you do that and it doesn't make you feel bad. It, it boosts you and it's always a boost for you. And that's beautiful. And it's like replacing things like the vape with something like that you know that's actually healthy for you that's a tool that you can use to keep yourself elevated versus you know this thing that's putting so many harmful toxins in your body and your lungs we don't even know what's in it you know so even just through breath work because the parallels that you were drawing are just i mean it's an uncanny parallel that you drew that comparison mm -hmm. to that it became like oxygen but when we do actual breath work mm -hmm. and that oxygen, we can have the same effect of, that boost of the present moment without any of the drawbacks, like you said. Exactly. That's just, yeah. yeah, that and even meditation too and yoga. There's so many different outlets and tools that we can use that are just here for us to, you know, ex our human potential and see what re heights that we can reach and what levels that we can vibrate to. It's just beautiful. And it's just finding these things that resonate with you, you right. know, and that call to you and make you happy. Right. right. It's, it's, you know, everyone is an individual and things are going to resonate and connect with you that might not connect with others. But like, definitely when you find something, you know, that, that is giving you life, you know, stick to it, you know, stick to it. because I also really feel connected to you, Natalie, on different levels, especially with ADHD. I was also diagnosed at an early age, you know, with ADHD. So when it comes to that abundance of energy that you just don't know what to do with it all, they kind of told me like, oh, you're going to have trouble focusing and you're going to be this kind of, kind of student and you're, you're not that kind of student. So just what you said earlier, that kind of brought me back down memory lane of wanting to just be a kid and just do things that kids do and feeling like I was not like those kids over there, like feeling like I, I couldn't do those things or I couldn't concentrate and I couldn't pay attention. And, you know, they always wanted me to do this and I didn't want to do that. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Trying to keep us in this little, this box right. and everybody else. Yeah. And right. not meant for that. <laughs> Right. So just feeling your energy, you know, I have a lot of energy as well. And I've, I've learned how to utilize that energy to be productive instead of destructive. Mm -hmm. But I've also learned how to not live. Hey. <laughs> I love that. 
So yeah, you know, just to be able to use my imagination to not have that limitation, you know, and it's just, it's brought so much more elation in my life to to kind of reverse that. I like how you said a superpower because mm -hmm. I do as a superpower mm -hmm. now. As years ago, when they had me on, you know, different medications, oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't see it as a superpower. I saw it as a curse, you know. Yeah. I didn't see it as a blessing in disguise. But now I do see it. Yeah. Definitely. We're all so unique. And ADHD being a superpower, I feel that for me, in a sense, with being sometimes, you know, we hyper focus into things, right? But it's a superpower because now I can dive all of my energy into this craft, into this thing and excel at it, yeah. you know? And it's all about changing that mindset. I can either classify myself as different from everybody else and I'm just you know, sad because I don't think the way that you think, or I can be on top of the moon because I don't think the way that you think, and you think differently than I think, and it's unique and it's beautiful, right? And we can inspire each other that way. And it's just, it, everything, I like optimism all the way. <laughs> Turn everything into positive, you know? Everything can be cultivated into something greater, a learning lesson too. Absolutely. You turn your, turn your left in the blessings yeah. You know. <laughs> heck yeah yeah it's so key it's so true because you know they say that the mind you know we can only hold like one thought at a time in the conscious mind mm -hmm. it's always running in the background but we can't consciously hold a positive thought and a negative thought at the same time mm -hmm. so we do choose mm -hmm. you know it's up to choose. so it's like what do we have to lose when it's up to us to choose. Exactly. Uh, and I feel like with fasting, I've been able to pay a lot more attention to my thoughts. Right. And sometimes I'll have thoughts that are negative, of course, yeah. right? And a lot of the time now, I'm just like, wow, well, that was negative, huh? But good thing that, you know, I'm not going to act on it or I'm not going to think that way because I can turn that around and yeah. match that with a positive yeah. thought. You know, and it's been such a blessing because I feel like back when I was not taking care of myself and I was so full of junk and my mind was racing with so many different thoughts, it just weighs heavy on you. It weighs so heavy on you and you don't, sometimes I would catch myself in thought loops over the same thing, negative things. Maybe I would be reenacting an argument in my head or, you know, like fabricating scenarios and um, then I would have to catch myself like, wow, I just spent, you know, the last two hours thinking about this same situation over and over. It's been draining me. It's negative. It's not positive. When really I can, these things can pop up in my mind and I can address them, but I don't have to indulge in it. I don't have to act on it. I don't have to continue thinking it. I can, oh yeah, that happened and that sucked, huh? And then continue being in the present moment, you know, and not being stuck it's been such a blessing to have greater awareness on the things that I didn't realize were just affecting me, you know, just so full with just so much distraction and food and junk and toxins that I just didn't even realize how I was going about on this earth, you know, and how my mental state was. No, I agree. I definitely agree. And I can relate because there's a saying like, uh, you know, just because a bird like flies overhead, it doesn't mean that you have to let it make a nest there. Yeah. You, know? mm -hmm. you don't have to let it roost there. You know, it doesn't, doesn't have to make a nest on your head. You can just let it pass. Yeah. Fly over. Right? Wow. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's a crazy thought right there. Whoa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly that. Feel like you have a little bit more control over your life you know yeah. a little bit more a little bit more say in in what you're allowing in and and how you are just going about walking on this earth uh, yeah uh, yeah you just you bring so much joy like what <laughs> that's a crazy yeah. <laughs> that one right there that was crazy I yeah <laughs> oh my gosh you know, you, you mentioned earlier, Natalie, about the transformation that you went through when you, you tried uh, magic mushrooms. Yeah. And you were, did you say that you had a conversation with God? I don't remember exactly the words, but you said that 
maybe God spoke to you or something spoke to you that told you everything was going to be okay? Or can you describe that one more time? Yeah, it felt like God was speaking to me. It felt like I entered this space. I also had healing frequency music on at that same time. So it, it also created the, 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 the space with the sounds. But um, I was in a beanbag chair all nestled in my blanket and it felt like God was holding me. It felt like I was so loved and so comforted and supported. And it felt like God was speaking to me. It just, I just had these words come to my mind. Like, you know, your mother knew she did the best what she knew. And I feel like they weren't my own thoughts because I, this whole time had been, you know, holding on to so much anger and resentment over the things that had happened to me leading up to that point. So to one day miraculously have this thought like, ah, oh, you know, I felt like it was God speaking to me and reminding me and telling me that things were going to be okay and to not hold on to this any longer. You know, it's okay to let go and to forgive. And I've learned the power of forgiveness through that experience, which is so beautiful. To forgive, I feel like is more so for yourself because when you aren't in a place of forgiveness, sometimes that can be a reason why you are stuck in these thought loops. Mm -hmm. You're so caught on to these things that people have done to you and you, you're trying to rationalize why this happened and who did what and, and why things went out and panned out the way that they did. Sometimes I would just realize I'm, I'm just stuck in these, in these just negative thought forms because I can't let go. Mm -hmm. And forgiving, I've been able to let go and now it's like I don't even think about those situations and circumstances anymore because it's all forgiven and I realize now through forgiveness what really matters to me and mm. what really matters to me is connection I love human beings I love people I love connection I love family I love friends and you know what there's nothing that matters to me more than just that no matter the circumstance no matter the argument so through forgiveness it's been such a wild journey because I feel like I lost weight without losing weight. Mm -hmm. I'm light now. I don't carry so much on my shoulders. I don't carry so much of my mental. And, you know, sometimes you don't have the opportunity to physically, verbally forgive somebody. Sometimes it's more so about you lifting up that burden on your own mind. Sometimes those people aren't here anymore for you to physically forgive them. You know, sometimes they are so upset and they don't even want to talk to you, you know, that you don't have that opportunity, but at least in your heart, you know that you don't hold anything for them other than love. And that's so powerful. It's so good for your own self and your own mental health. Absolutely. This is the message, you know, because we all do have so many things that, that weigh on our shoulders and it does follow us, like, as we grow older, you know, like, we don't get that weight off our shoulders it's it's not going anywhere you know it's gonna stay there it's gonna even the pressure might even get more if we don't you know release we don't release that pressure so i love that you did that for yourself and to have that experience you know during that you know just during that that experience when you were with the mushrooms and having that feeling of being protected and comforted you said you felt comforted supported and protected do you still have that feeling right now like even after that experience has it lingered with you knowing that you are divinely guided and supported that's a great question jerome because i was not religious up to that point okay so it was really a, a weird experience for me to have had that and not had really any knowing any knowledge of, of God or, or any kind of religion. My mom didn't want me to, you know, be involved in any kind of religion until I was 18. Right. So when I turned 18, I'm kind of like, well, I've been living without God up until this point, you know, why do I need to, you know, deepen further my uh, connection or exploration of this higher power if I've not needed it all until this point. But it wasn't until I took those mushrooms that day and had that experience did I realize like, you know, there is a higher power here. There is a consciousness that exists. There is love that is here and it surrounds us and it's always here. So at first it wasn't 
uh, easy for me to, it's like I have that experience, but then you get, you go into life and then it's sometimes hard to integrate that into life, especially not feeling that all the time or not even, you know, like having any really idea of what God is. So it took me to kind of go on my own journey of figuring out um, and establishing a greater relationship with God for me to now like implement on the daily that I am surrounded by this love, that this love exists, that it's here, that I am supported, that I am protected. Um, so at first, no, it wasn't easy because I, I didn't even know what that experience was. I had to like <laughs> figure out like what happened. Like, like that's crazy. I didn't know that I could have like, um, an ex experience outside of my known, you know? So now that I've, that, that was probably about three years ago now. And I feel like mushrooms are actually very powerful tools for healing. Mm. I think a lot of what we do has to do with intention and intention with mushrooms. You can heal. You can see things from a greater perspective. You can see outside of limitations. You can, it's a, it's, it's, I feel like it's, it's just a, a very powerful tool for us to kind of step out of our comfort zone of the known and embark on what more is and how we can better go about the things in our lives. So I've, um, I love to do uh, healing sessions with myself with mushrooms. And uh, every time that I do it now, I feel reconnected with this source, with this love that is ever so present. And it feels so real and so strong to me that I feel like I could just disappear and melt away into everything. Wow. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's so healing for me because I feel like now I have that to look back to. I can hold that in my heart and in my day to day, I can always use that experience to uplift myself. Like this knowing that, you know, this is, this energy is, is here. It surrounds us. And it's up to us if we want to tap into it, you know? And there's so many ways you can do that. You don't have to do mushrooms. You can do meditations, you know? You can, it, I really do think it's about finding that stillness. And there's so much beauty in stillness. So it's, I didn't realize until I started this whole journey. Um, and just being. I think one of the most powerful messages I've ever received uh, while I was, uh, having a, a healing ceremony for myself was to just be that we're here to, to, to just be an experience and to live and, you know, to shine our lights. And the best thing that I can do for myself is to just be walk my truth. <laughs> and it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a blessing, you know? So right now, um, I like to do things to remind myself and like bring that love into my heart every day. So like throughout the day, I will practice gratitude. Mm. I love throughout the day to just be so grateful for what I have. You know, not everybody has the things that the things that you have, and it looks so different for everybody. And I I love starting my day with that. Or throughout the day, I will thank God for for what I what what just happened right now. You know, or for this water that I'm drinking here, you know, like, and it makes you feel so good. It, it, it really, uh, it helps you change your mindset. If you're not in a good mindset, if you're ruminating on things, if you're feeling like you want to, you know, raise your spirits up, just practicing gratitude and opening your heart and just like, wow, like I have a family, you know, I have cousins, I have friends that love me. I have a room I, I can call my own a car. You know, like how blessed am I? So uh, it's been such a beautiful journey for me and and really like branching myself out and really being aware of like what's here for us. Mm. Yeah, what a wonderful practice, you know? That really was heartfelt just now. Like just hearing that from you, it just oozes, <laughs> you know? 